back, everyone, to a brand new Getting Color right here on the TheBigVitoBrand.com. I am Virtue being joined by the man himself, former WCW Hardcore Legend champion, Big Vito LaGrasso. What's up, Vito? How is everybody out there? It is good to be back with my partner, Mr. Virtue. Um, I know, guys, we've taken a little bit of a hiatus, but that was because of Miss Noel's uh, health issues. Right now, she's still trying to recover. We figured we'd give it a shot and see how she reacts to getting back on track. Thank you guys for being patient. The well wishes and everything. That's the back. Thanks to my boys here in the Big Vito brand for sticking by us. We appreciate it. Virtue, we have missed a lot of stuff. I know you're going to oh, cover yeah. the ground. So let's get on with it. So first, let's talk about let's talk about AEW or at least something from AEW. Good. So Christian Cage has turned heel in the last mm. month or so. Which I saw. And he's a veteran. Um, some of the promos he's been cutting are deep because he's talking about Jeff Hardy's substance abuse. Um, he mentioned something to Jungle Boy about his dead father. Obviously, mm. we know Luke Perry from 90210, wow. died yeah. of a stroke several years ago. Uh, I'm sure Christian had, you know, talked with the parties involved before he went out there and cut these promos. So, like, what do you think here? Because it's always blurred the line in wrestling when you talk about real-life stuff like that, whether it's approved by all parties or not. What What's your take here? Because it's getting Christian some good heel heat, but the subjects involved, very touchy, all what do right. You think? Hello to Annette. Hello to Kevin. Here's my thoughts on it. Guys, you got to get heat somewhere. So to make the people believe, you got to talk deep. And if you got to cut deep, this is the nature of the beast today. So Christian Cage cutting on, you know, Matt and Jeff Hardy, that's real life stuff. So we're not talking about anything fabricated. You're talking about Luke Perry. That's real life stuff. She's not fabricating. And what's better than anything is when the heel gets beat. But you got to let them build up the heat for you to get the payoff at the end. So I think it's okay. I think it's good. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's going back to wrestling 101 so we can all believe and watch the show. So do you think if WWE did something like with Jimmy Uso, even mentioned like Naomi, like couldn't uh... – she left because she couldn't get her way. Could they do something like that with the bloodline? They put, could. Put them on edge? They, yeah, but you know what? The bloodline is too strong, and Roman Reigns is running too hard, and the Usos have been a faction for two years now. So why throw something like that in there, especially after Naomi disrespected the company, didn't want to listen, didn't want to do what they, what she, what they wanted her to do, and now she's on the shelf, and who knows if she's going to come back. Now – I think it's always a good thing to get heat, right? I, I mean, right. if you if you are doing something that somebody else hasn't agreed upon, you know, that's different. I, I know a lot of the wrestlers in the business know, hey, business first, you know, don't take anything personal. So right. I'm going to chalk the Christian stuff up as it's all being done. Everybody knows, and it's to get some heel heat. And think about it. How many people like heels these days because they're great workers? Like, look at the MJF stuff. We know – that's a work, but people are like, oh, you know, look, great heel work. I don't like that. I don't like when fans can say that. I want the fans to be pissed off at the heel so they root for the baby faces because that's how you suspend your disbelief, right? Now, you know? Let me ask you a question. Do you really think the MJF thing is a work? I do. I absolutely do. And they are going so far to try to make everybody think it's real. That's just my opinion. I, how, I don't how, think they would have gave him that live mic. First of all, some guys the, are assholes when they get the mic. The match. I want to ask you. With, I want to ask you. Match happened the with Wardlow, and then I, I just think they did too much with it, and then they decided to pull back to make it seem real. I, I don't know. Ask, I'm, I'm not. I want to ask you a question. Okay. How do you bring him back Ooh. with all the stuff that's been done? The only thing, Vito, because they're trying to make it seem like, say, shoot or work. You're bringing him back. The company and the network it. kicked him out, right, more or less. The right. only way you can bring him back is to have, like, an agent or an attorney with him saying, hey, he has every right to be here. Boring. 
But Boring. how else would you do it? Would you that's have why, it be it, buy a ticket, which has been done before, jump Boring. the rail, get arrested? Boring. Done it. Enzo. Then, Boring. No, but well, the thing is, Enzo thing was a shoot. Like, if this is a work. Yeah, but it's the thing is that this has all been done. It's nothing new here. So, like, when you're talking this stuff, I don't think it's as much as a, a, a I don't think this is a, a, that much of a work because if the network took you off all their promos, we haven't heard from you, you're sitting home. How dry can you be when you come back? Okay, you all come back. You already lost your heat. It's not Dude, like you're going to gain it back. If it was if it was a shoot, he would be all over bad-mouthing AEW on, Twi- on, on the internet. And he's not. Yeah, but then he has a thing detrimental to the uh, – to the company, was he going to suspend you with pay? Right now, he's sitting home getting paid. Yeah, I so just shut I, your mouth. I, I think they're trying to, and they're using the dirt sheets. I think they're trying to make people think it's a shoot. I don't know, but anyway, I guess he should. By the way, do you think he should? They should wait with this, or say it was a work, right? You think they should wait with this or bring him back sooner? Why strike while the iron is hot, like they say? There's no reason. There's no place to bring him back to. Who are you putting? All in? the injuries though they have. They Doesn't couldn't matter. lose that buzz. I Doesn't. say they should bring him back right away. That's what I think. To do what? To come back out and just cut promos and be a heel and be a dick. Be but that's that what heel. got him in it. But that's what's got him in his mess. But that, that's, I, that, that's fabricated. I'm saying it's a fabricated. I cannot believe it's true, Vito. I wonder what people in the chat think. I, I just, I don't know, man. Uh, guys, I guess we'll what, have to see how it develops. If the network is there in the house, and you have all your sponsors there in the house, and you come F this, F that, F this, F that, and you think they're going to be able to produce and do something with those promos, and you think they're going to be able to produce money? He's not, and it's not going to do any. You don't see anything like this in the WWF or the WWE. You, well, you, you don't know, see this. Russo points out a good point. You didn't see the network specifically come out and do it. It was AEW said the network said. And, you know, he Russo says this is a screaming work and they're trying to be like clever and fool everybody. But again, there's 50 50. Half the people believe it, half the people don't, Vito. So maybe if you look at it from that point of view, then it's a good thing. Okay. You got, you got right, no matter what side of the coin. People are engaged to either see it play out like it's supposed to be, or it was all phony and they want to see it play out anyway. So Vito, well, Jericho made the comment, you know, you're not as good as you think you are, and you should have been paid way before you got this. The, the boys are all working in on it. Tony Khan, his, it, it, that's what I think. Wardlow's come out and said it. I'm, I'm giving him props for all this, Vito, because everybody, it, it seems like this is legit, and that, and today's no kayfabe. That's why I'd rather have it be a work for them trying to push this real than for it to really be real because then it's like, oh, man, they fooled us. You know, they didn't fool us. I, I want to be fooled because it just doesn't happen these days in wrestling. Everybody's in the know, right? Okay. All right. We'll leave it at know. that. Next subject. All right. Vito. Logan Paul, had the boxer, and his brother Jake Paul does the more prolific boxing matches, but – has signed, Logan Paul has signed with WWE. Now, you know, he did some stuff at WrestleMania. Right. Um, Pat McAfee recently signed an extension. So what's your thoughts on McAfee's obviously already proven that he can go. I mean, he's trained by Rip Rogers. They use him as a special attraction match. So he's not out there, you know, in an unbelievable situation. It, it's, it's situational based on feuds. Right. Um, Logan Paul going to mix it up with The Miz. Man, I'm telling you, they're trying to go mainstream. What do you think? The wrestling business has changed over the last 30 years. You used to have to earn your spot and pay your dues and do all these things. When stars and celebrities were brought in, they did a specific thing and they were gone from the business. Mm -hmm. Today's wrestling is more entertainment more than ever. And they think they could teach you to do these things on the fly because the business and entertainment has has become a revelation, social media, all this stuff. To the people who pay their dues on the the indies and working and training, it's sad because those people get the spots taken taken away, but on the same token, they're not putting asses in the seats and they're not drawing a dime. So 
I think for this generation of wrestling, we have to accept it. Will it go back to the old way of wrestling? Yes, but not in this generation of wrestling. We have to they wait say, for the I next think, generation. I think what WWE is trying to do is stack the card with a lot of that stuff because – Look at WrestleMania, for instance. It was a whole two-day thing. You, right. you had a bunch of – you had McAfee right. had his match. Logan Paul had his, Reigns and Lesnar. And the whole weekend brought record-breaking revenue numbers to Dallas for, for big events. Right. Peacock numbers were – so, like, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to not just make the one Hulk Hogan attraction. They're trying to make the whole thing. Look what they did with Bad Bunny years prior, and they're – you're right. Not one person is responsible for bringing ass to seats, but they're trying to make the whole thing look star studded in terms of wrestling, entertainment, celebrities. And that's just what they're doing. All right. I mean, we'll wait. it's a wait and see how, how this turns out. What do you think about Miz, by the way? You think I think he's a Hall of Famer. I think I think he's one of those guys. Everything he's done since he came up, paid his dues. Right. Got to the top, and even even if he loses a lot of matches, everything still feels important with him. Like, what do you think about the Miz? I got in an argument. People were like touting McAfee, Logan Paul, and said Miz was never at that level that early in his career. And I'm like, how, how I'm like, what this... do you exactly? What do you think about Miz? I say Hall of Famer. Miz, Miz is one of the top talents to get people over in the company. What are they talking about? Yep, exactly. He is the man. He is the man who's to, who could be put in any position in the company and draw money. So what are these people talking about? Yeah, it's like early, and it's different times. I mean, Miz came up through a tough enough system. He was a tag team with Johnny Nitro. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't just thrust in as a celebrity off the real world. And you have to work at it, people. Yes. You have to go out there and work at it. If you don't work at it, you're not going to be anything in the business. That's true. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, Vito, another topic here. So a lot has happened with the SmackDown Women's Championship since we've last done a show. Okay. Liv Morgan won the Money in the Bank, which was a surprise. She cashed right. it in that night on Ronda Rousey. So right. what's your thoughts on that? And then, of course, I don't know if you recently saw a house show. Um, somebody recorded with their cell phone. Liv Morgan versus Natty, and Liv Morgan beat her with some move. And right after the three count, Natty got up and no sold the finish and pointed at her. And of course, immediately came on to her own defense on social media and said, I'm breaking character now. I said, Thank you. There's different ways to thank somebody in a match, whether it's a house show or not. What do you think of all that that transpired? It's a lot. Liv Morgan winning the title and cashing on Ronda Rousey. Okay. Rousey turning heel and Shayna Baszler is supposed to be her partner in crime and all the badasses together. Cool. Um, the house show stuff, you know, I read reports and I've seen things where Liv Morgan acts like a fan and not like a wrestler. Well, that's and, true. And she's living the moment. So – could it be she's a transitional champion just to give it a little different look, a little flavor? I don't think her title run is going to run that deep. I don't think it's going to be that long. I think it's a transition, maybe a month, two months, and then she's going to give the title up. So here's my thought process. Regardless of, like, you're right, She her promo on Raw after she won the title was like a fan. We did it, you know, jumping up and down. like It was like a cosplay wrestler. I'm a fan. I wasn't a fan of that. We talked about that on the review. Um, she's still having these matches, though, and in this day and age with people having cell phones, like if Natty's pissed at her, wouldn't you still do the job, sell it, then when behind the curtain, address your issues? Come on, Natty, you're a pro. Like, those kind of things bother me, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like when – I want the wrestlers to at least try to make the fans suspend their disbelief with kayfabe while they're out there in front of the cameras because kids are watching. Right. Some of the older people, there are still some people out there that might think these are legit fights. Don't let them, don't let them, the small percentage at least, question. And in a house show, a lot of kids still go there. I, I just wasn't, if, I don't know. It just, I watched it. She, Privileged, she, did, the Austin, she did the Austin Aries, hopped right up. Privileged wrestlers, privileged because they have freedom of speech. They're not going to come down on them. They have too much to say. Back in the day, you never did this stuff. You should go back that way. 
That's why people don't believe, and that's why the product sucks at times, because they don't make it believable. She should have just did the job and did the finish, and that would have been it. It's a house show. Nobody's watching. It's not taped. Now, Vito, touchy subject here. I didn't have this on the list. Okay. But, you know, people look at wrestlers, and they expect a certain appearance. Right. I mean, you see Diva, sorry, Diva, sorry, the women wrestlers like Natty. Right. You know they're having work done, right? And I'm not going to say that's bad or good. You know, just that's their choice. Mm-hmm. Um, you got fans, though, like look at Adam Cole. He looks like a string bean. Booker T's like, yeah, if you want to be something in this business, you got to look the part. Eddie Kingston's out there getting body shamed. It's a touchy subject. I, for one, think wrestlers should look the part. If, if you're not like a guy that's in shape like a Bobby Lashley, that's okay. I mean, look at Earthquake. Look at Vader. Look at um, Bundy. Look at Bam Bam, right? Great workers. They didn't have to be Hulk Hogan. What's your take with all of this here? Like, you got, uh, you, you're you always Mr. Fit. And fit and all right, here it, is. here it is. I'm going to give it to you guys. It's like a double big Vito, big Vito, dragon. Big Vito of the 90s it was not a bodybuilder. I was a big guy. Big Vito going into um, after WCW. I said I have to transform my body to what they want of, of, of cookie cutter and being cut up and ripped and all that. I did it to be in the WWE. And that's what they wanted. They wanted bodies. I mean, I was going through friggin' an eight pack and just, you know, being, okay, ripped and shredded and just, you know, oh my God. So it went from as a high of 292 to as low as 205 during my wrestling career. That's a big jump. It's almost 100 pounds. But you got to pick and choose where you are, how you're going to do it, how you're going to use it. Of all the guys in WWE, Kevin Owens is not a bodybuilder, very good worker, has had a good career, right? So if you're looking at Kevin Owens, one, but I don't think uh, but Kingston, see, he's got good ring cardio, right? And, he, and he's, yeah. he's quick. He doesn't, he doesn't look slow or whatever. Um, then look at a Keith Lee. Looked slow, like and look at Eddie Kingston. What a like, waste of a contract! What a waste of a body! What a waste of it! This guy's got no motivation, the, no nothing. The matches looks like I, no, no knock on Eddie Kingston. I've seen him here in Cleveland doing indies, but everything just looked slow, and the timing were like like he was gassed. That's when I think it becomes a problem. If guys are not pushed by the office to change their exterior and change their look and get in better shape, guys are going to keep going. It's up to Tony Khan to say, hey, um, you know, Eddie Kingston, we'd like you to get in better shape. It's, you know, and here's something for everybody out there. Every overweight person, you could be overweight. You could be happy being overweight. You could be doing it. When you're ready to get in shape, you will be the one to judge to be in shape. Eddie Kingston likes who he is, likes what he's doing, likes everything. But there is going to come a day when he's going to say, I need to get in better shape. And until that time... He's not going to change his mind or do anything. So you got to leave him the way he is. Is it a shame that body shaming somebody, you know, or making fun of somebody because they're not skinny, they're not built, they're not jacked, they're not ripped? Guys, everybody's a human being. Your body's your body, you know? And no matter what you do, it's just like even normal people. How about a woman who has a baby, all right? She has... um she has baby issues with the body, right? It takes her at least a good year to get back into her old body. And then if yeah. she has another baby, everything goes again. Hopefully they learn to stay fit and stay in the gym during the baby process. So this way it's not that much of a you know a drama on their body. You know what I mean? So guys, lay off people who body because like if it was you and you had to go out in a bathing suit. You know, do you want to be body shamed? I don't think so. So best male and female, um, big man or woman of all time, like that larger than, I'm not saying because they were big, but they were just great. They were larger than life. They were still smooth in the ring. You got a couple picks, female, male? Like I'll go off the top of my head, Vader, Awesome Kong. I mean, I, I don't know. Who am I overlooking? Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam. I agree with Bam that. Bam Bigelow is a great Adrian Adonis, right? Talk about big men. Um, 
And I know back in the day, the women weren't prevalent. Kamala. Like they, Kamala. Kamala. That right. was a gimmick. That was his gimmick. And he, he, could, could, he could leapfrog. Right? Who else you got? You got Typhoon. Earthquake. Earthquake and Typhoon. It was sad with Yokozuna because that fit that gimmick so well, but it it got out of control for him as eating. Okay. That, that was unfortunate. But when he would during his run, he was a legend. I mean, how about Haystacks Calhoun? Yeah. Let's go that far back. What about what about Chief J. Strombo? What about Wahoo McDaniel? What yeah, about those guys? Dogs. What about the Moon Dogs? What about Opera and Sika? The Wild Samoans. I, I'm I'm t- trying to make heat here, but uh what about Foley? <laughs> okay, no, Mick Foley, but Mick Foley's another one. You could include Big Vito in that group because I never got tired and I was always in shape and I could get to the top rope and do everything. Yeah. I, I was a high flyer, considered a, a high flyer, right? So if I'm doing all those things and I'm at 260, 270, 275 and I'm doing these things, and then when I come back down to 215, 210, 205, and I'm still doing the same things, okay, that's a big 60 pound jump. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying I'm in that category of all-time greats, but you talk about size and body, you know. Uh, Dr. Dead Steve Williams was a big guy. Yep. Uh, Gary Albright was a big guy. Um, there were I mean, I remember as a kid, you know, I'd get, I'd go to the Richfield Coliseum in Cleveland. They had several Survivor Series here, and I'd be watching these guys go by the aisle, and I had aisle seats, and I was just in awe. Uh, what about Andre the Giant? Yeah. Uh, look at somebody that big and you yeah. talk about and he used to wrestle in Japan, guys. What about Hulk Hogan during his Japan days? I was a big son of a bitch wrestling and he could wrestle. Yeah, it's true. So all right, had to throw that out there and get your opinion. No, it's uh, good. It's a good, it's a good subject. Before we go to the main event, anything on your mind since we haven't done a show for a couple of weeks? Uh guys. There have been some issues in the WWE and very sad issues that have come to light about payoffs and women and how they're treated. And that's our main event, by the way. So you can segue right into it. Vince McMahon. You know, (laughs) you got to – the whole thing doesn't look very good. And I got to say – if you're a father, how do your daughters look at you? If you're a grandfather, how do your grandchildren look at you? If you're married, how does your wife look at you when all this comes out? Now, there could be a lot of things said about Vince McMahon. He was accused of doing a lot of nasty, dirty things. John Laurinaitis was accused of doing a lot of dirty, nasty things. There were alleged payoffs. There was alleged controversy. There was things that were brought to the attention of the investors about payouts through the company, taking money from stockholders, insider trading, disgusting things that have transpired, you know. So as a human being, where do you draw the line? You're rich and powerful, yes. Much respect for having that kind of money. But between John Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon, they could have done great things to help the industry, not to do the behind the scenes things to dirty the sport. So my take is the truth always comes out. There are situations that when you're in wrestling and you're really in and you know of these things, it's the code, it's the culture, it's the way things are. Some things that go unsaid, being that it's a different era in time, things can be said and people can defend themselves and come out and say X, Y, and Z. Everything will work itself out. Mm -hmm. Everybody will get vindicated for whatever reason. And guys, it's just a very, very bad black eye on wrestling for the powerful people who have the money to do these things, but they could be doing something great instead of something deceitful. They could be helping the wrestlers and putting that money to good use instead of throwing it at people to be quiet. 
Why not use the money so people could shout how great you are instead of shutting them up and how terrible you are? So the morality obviously is awful here, right? Yes. There's no doubt about that. Um, one who's went to college and taken courses and stuff. I've always believed in the system, though. And right now, Vince McMahon hasn't been charged with any crime. It's no. just his company is looking into how he – did he use his own money? Did he use company money? All of these, if these are true, these payoffs were agreed by the other party as well. So this kind of thing, unfortunately, happens in the business world, in Hollywood, um, a lot. And I'm going to tell you, Vito, got to play devil's advocate. Morally, Vince McMahon's a scumbag. But he could come out of this still running the WWE, or at the very least, you can't be forced to sell all your shares, but he could sit at home, collect his money that he makes off the company, let Stephanie and Nick Khan run it, and still tell them via text and phone calls what he'd like done. You know what I mean? Theoretically, Vince could, if he is removed completely from the board and doesn't go back and creative, He's going to sit at home and make money off the company and still puppeteer it. Just until he's passed away or he sells everything that he owns, that's just how it is. I, I, what do you think? That, well, that he's going to find a way. How? Guys, I mean, the people who are listening to this, right? My opinion. No, your opinion. Just follow this for a second. We all look at Charlotte Flair. Right, and Ric Flair is her father. Now, Ric Flair has done some great things in the wrestling business, and he's done some not so great things in the wrestling business. But that's her father. You're not going to go stab your father in the back. Can you be proud of what your father did? No. Let's take Stephanie McMahon. She's a very bright, energetic businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. She stands for a lot of great things. But she's put in a position now where these things are coming out about her father that he did these things with women. Now, Stephanie and Triple H have three daughters. How does that look to the grandkids and to look to the family? So what we also was reported is that Linda and Vince are separated. They are no longer together. Okay. You look at John Laurinaitis, all the things that have been said about him during this time. His wife is sick at home and has been sick for the past couple of years. Yep. And he's over here doing these things. And how would you be how would you feel if your husband is being chastised and said, Hey, this is what your husband's been doing while you've been sick? You know, the Bella twins have to live with this. Yep. Their children have to live with this. Um, Daniel Bryan is related to them. So how does he deal with it? So it's not just a, a, a one person. It's a family. You're talking about people's families. And I always said families don't belong in the wrestling business, right? So when you have to look at the whole picture, you know, as great – let's talk about the accomplishments that um, Linda McMahon has done, okay? She was a part owner of the WWE. She made some great strides also as an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. She got to sit – in the presidential cabinet yep. with President Trump. That is awesome. That's great stuff, right? You have um, Mrs. Laurinaitis, Mr. Bella Twins' mom, successful entrepreneur, successful businesswoman, okay? And she made her way in the, in, in the world. And then if she gets sick, and then her husband's accused of doing these things. How does that look for her? Right. Everybody has a past and everybody knows what everybody does. I mean, when you have firsthand knowledge of what goes on in the, the WWE world, you sit there, you watch, you go. Wow. Wow. It all comes out. These are all accusations. But in reality, who are the people that really are affected? The victims or the alleged victims? But the families, the wives, the grandchildren, and the family members who are related to these two gentlemen, and they have to sit there and look at this. And how do you look at them correctly? Well, when you open up a can of worms, Pandora's box starts flooding. And I'm telling you, Vito, we might not have heard the end of this. So No, we might not have. But you know what? You know, for the families that are involved, I hope there's an easy cure and an easy way to 
put your pain aside and move forward. For the two gentlemen who were accused of these things, guys, you could have thought of a lot better things to do with your money and a lot better things to do with your time than yeah. doing this shit. And this shit has been going on for a long, long time time it's part of the culture of wrestling it's yep. the code that you follow and it finally has come out we will see what happens did by no means are we accusing anybody or saying anything but if you were in the business like i was i know what happened and i know what goes on so you take it from there hopefully everybody has a happy ending oh i shouldn't have said that i'm sorry <laughs> i hope everybody is great. um we know you, man. We, you guys understand what I'm saying. I hope there's there's a uh, a solution to it. Yeah, and a and a positive ending. Dot dot dot. Right. I'm sure we'll talk about this later. That's it for this That's week, it. Vito. All we did right, it thirty minutes, baby. Thirty minutes. Annette, Kevin, thank you. Noel's back. Um, hope everybody's doing good. Mister Virtue's back. I see some great pictures online. You're doing some great things there. Um, guess what guys? I'm going to make for dinner right now. What are you going? What are you doing? I'm, go I'm going to make meatloaf. You are the man. You're the man. Meatloaf. Ma, oh, the meatloaf. Ma, the meatloaf. That's All it. All right. Be sure to follow Vito on Twitter at the Big Vito Brand. Follow me if you'd like at no DQ underscore virtue. And check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash Big V Mafia. For Vito, I'm Virtue, and this has been Getting Color right here on the Big Vito Brand.com. Thanks for watching and listening. And we will be back again next time. See you later.